If you're a new Remarkable user and you want to get the most out of your new tablet, these are some tips and tricks that I've learned over the past eight years that I've been using these devices since the Remarkable One. These should apply to any Remarkable device you have. So let's get to it so you can get the most out of your Remarkable device. Now, the first tip I want to share is a brand new one to the Remarkable app, and that is actually a document scanner. So initially you had to upload a document to the app from your phone that you took, but now they built in a direct document scanner in the Remarkable app, which is incredibly useful. And I'll show you kind of how it works. It auto detects the scan and then it'll auto capture the image and then convert it just like that. If you don't see it right away, I'd recommend going to the Google Play Store or the iOS App Store and just making sure you have the most up-to-date version because that is a feature that came out, I believe, last week. It's relatively new and your app might not have auto-updated. So just make sure to check that. And then two other things in the app are first, the ability to screen share. So this is incredibly helpful as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network. Maybe you're presenting to clients or to your teammates and you wanna share some stuff directly from your Remarkable. You can quickly do that through the app and then in real time, it will show what you were writing or annotating or whatever you want to highlight. And then another thing I discovered probably a couple of years ago, but is kind of helpful is in your titles for documents, you can't add emojis in the actual name creation process, but you can do that in the app. And so for these, I like having an emoji in the title name of what the actual document is. And so it just visually helps me get to stuff faster as well as these that we'll talk about in a little bit for your actual thumbnail. By far one of the most useful features in the Remarkable platform that I don't really see from any of the other e-ink manufacturers that make these e-ink note takers is the Chrome extension. The Chrome extension perfectly just sends the PDF of the page you're looking at into the app and it syncs very quickly. So if you're someone like me that has hundreds of Chrome tabs built up, that is a really nice option because you can just send it over and then just read it in your spare time when you're kind of lounging around with your Remarkable. So you can reduce your screen time and you can annotate directly on the actual document there. Very invaluable and is one of my favorite things about the Remarkable. If you want to be able to do this from your phone, I believe there are two browsers you can use that are Chrome based and that is the Kiwi browser and I'll list the other one on the screen here because I can't remember the name of it right now. If you are someone that likes to see stuff very visually, or perhaps you're an artist looking to sketch on this, the tip I'll give you is when you import a PDF, it actually creates a background layer of the PDF. So if you go to the layers here, you can create new layers and you can actually trace over things on the PDF. So if you want to have some reference images and you wanna make your own notes based off of an image there, or if you're sketching and you just want an outline for something that you want to kind of implement on or create something off of, that is a really good option. And also you can have a sheet of paper that you can trace over. So that is, is nice if you're just really into your note taking and you wanna have some more interesting ways of, of doing stuff like that. And then another tip for PDFs is when you're in a PDF, you can actually slide over either way. So you can go this way or this way, and then you can directly mark up on the PDF, which is incredibly valuable. And if you're someone that likes to take little side notes, that is really cool. And that should work with any PDF document. For tip number five, I just want to quickly walk you through the gestures. There are two finger swipes from the top that will give you your most recent documents or you can also favorite documents, and then you can see your favorites there, which is a nice kind of multitasking way to switch in and out of different documents that you might be using at the same time on your Remarkable. You can also do a quick single swipe, which will take you back to the home page. And then two other very important gestures are when you are writing something, if you do a tap with two fingers, it will undo what you did. And then if you do a three finger tap, it will redo what you did. So that's helpful when you're note taking with one hand to be able to tap with the other one or do the triple tap. And then you can just quickly kind of undo, redo things. And then in general, 
when you are pinching and zooming, it works a lot better if you do a very light pinch and zoom. More so with the Remarkable Paper Pro, when I was kind of doing heavy presses like you would on your phone or a tablet, I noticed that it wasn't registering like 50% of the time. So just do a very light one and it will function as it should. It's not like the traditional LCDs with touch digitizers. It's e-ink, so you have to think about it a little bit differently than most tablets. So tip number six is actually very useful because e-ink is bi-stable. And basically what that means is that when it's displaying pixels on the screen, it's not using power. So this visible content option here, if you check it, it'll allow your most recent note or document that's open to stay on the screen. And so that way you can reference it uh, you know, if you have it on a stand or something and you're just looking at the notes while doing something else, that is a very useful option. And then in your note-taking workflow, it's incredibly helpful to have typed titles. So if you have a typed folio, this is much easier, but you can also do type text and type it in manually. And that allows everything to be searchable in terms of your headers. Or alternatively, you can use the tag feature here. You still have to manually do that but it does make stuff searchable and is just a better way to organize your workflow when you have a lot of documents and you just wanna be able to find something quickly. And then like I was mentioning earlier, for the actual thumbnails, you can reference the first page of your document to be the thumbnail. And I like doing a little sketch for the note so that when I go into a folder, it just makes it visually easier to access those and just to find stuff. And that way you don't need to be as organized, you just visually and contextually can find stuff much quicker. Tip number eight applies a little bit more towards the Remarkable Paper Pro than the Remarkable 2, but it is still possible. But essentially, these tips are something that you have to replace. This one I don't because I put a metal tip in it, a titanium tip. But with the Remarkable Paper Pro, if you're doing a lot of sketching, you will find that you will not rotate it much and, and kind of grind down the tip. And that will make you have to replace your tips much faster. But what you can do is you can take the tip and rotate it 180 degrees. And if you're sketching a lot, that will kind of even it out, just like a normal pencil. If you're used to sketching on pencil and paper, that is a, a tip that will extend the lifespan of your tips. When you do the selection tool, if you now just draw a line and hold, it will give you the option to select everything below. Instead of having to kind of navigate between everything, you can just draw a line, have everything below selected, and it's nice for when you're moving and shifting notes around. Then recently, Remarkable also added the shape feature. They've always had line snapping where you can just hold and then draw a precise line, but now you can actually draw shapes, whether that's a circle, uh, ellipse, a triangle, a square, a rectangle, when you want to have cleaner notes, better looking notes, or maybe you're doing like chemistry notes, or I saw someone on Reddit that posted a beautiful note recently where they were doing electrical engineering notes that could fit into your study or your workflow a little bit better as well with these shapes now. This is more relevant for the Paper Pro, but the contrast filter can be really nice to put in the auto settings sometimes because originally when it came out, the contrast filter was very kind of limited. You either turn it on or off and then it would make the contrast better, but sometimes the text wouldn't look very good. But now it's auto adaptive, so it makes both of those look good. So if you're looking at a PDF and it's not looking the best, maybe try the auto contrast filter and see how that looks for you. As well as the auto snap highlighting, that is very useful for the Paper Pro or even the Remarkable 2 even though it is a gray highlight. And then another nice thing for your notes, depending on what note you want, maybe you want a different page, you can actually have different templates and you can even import templates. I'll probably end up doing a video on custom templates that I make and kind of the workflow that I've had in the Remarkable at some point. You can check out my Paper Pro review right here if you want, or my Remarkable playlist where I've done a lot of different topics on these devices. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.